B wave, atrial depolarization. Duration of the B wave shouldn't exceed 2.5 small square in width 0.10 of a second. Its height or voltage shouldn't exceed 2.5 small square in voltage. It appears positive in lead to when the impulse comes from above from the SA node downwards towards the AV node and negative if the impulse comes from down upwards like in nodal rhythm. BR interval. It is calculated from the beginning of the B wave till the beginning of the QRS complex. It represents time for the impulse to spread from the SA node through the atria and pass through the AV junction to the ventricles. Duration of the BR interval is between 0.12 to 0.2 of a second, means from 3 to 5 small squares in width. So it shouldn't exceed one big square in width. It is prolonged in case of first degree heart block as we will see later and it is shortened in case of WBW syndrome or LDL syndrome or pre-excitation syndromes. The QRS complex. Not every complex contains the three deflections, the Q and the R and the S. We must know that the positive wave will be the R wave and the negative deflection before R wave will be the Q wave and the negative deflection after the R wave will be the S wave, as we will see later. The duration of the QRS complex is exactly the same as that of the B wave, one tenth of a second, so it shouldn't exceed 2.5 small squares in width. It represents the time for the impulse to spread through the ventricles, thus it is prolonged more than 2.5 small squares in cases of bundle branch block. These are different patterns of the QRS complex and now we will know how to name the different deflections. As we said, the positive deflection will be the R wave and the negative deflection before the R wave will be the Q alphabetically. Q, R, S and then the negative deflection after the R wave will be the S wave. And here there is only two deflections, one positive and one negative. The positive will be the R and the negative here because it is after the R wave it will be the S wave and here is the reverse Q because it is before the R wave and then R wave so QR here is only one positive deflection which will be the R wave here it is the reverse again only one negative deflection there is no positive deflection to know whether this is Q or S that's why we will call this QS pattern is a unique pattern which is called R S R dash. Both are R's because both of them are positives. And here is the S wave because it is coming after the first R. We will find this in the right bundle branch block as we will see later. The ST segment. It is the segment from the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the T wave. So once the QRS complex will end, this we will call it the G point the upward slope of the S wave, then the beginning of the ST segment, this is called the G point. Then the ST segment will be here till the beginning of the T wave. Once we say a segment, so we don't include any wave in our measurements, like the ST segment, BR segment, but once we say interval, like BR interval, we will include waves in our measurements, like the BR interval, we will include the B wave and the BR segment. The T segment normally should be flat or isoelectric on the baseline, but it may be slightly elevated or depressed normally, but this elevation or depression shouldn't exceed one millimeter or one small square. Shouldn't even reach this. The junction between the end of the QRS complex and the ST segment, as we said, will be called the G point. Here is some different shapes of the ST segment. Here a flat or isoelectric ST segment. Then here ST elevation. Then here ST segment depression. Then here is ST segment depression with inverted T wave. By the way, to define the isoelectric line of the ECG, we shouldn't look to the BR interval to define the isoelectric line. Because in some cases, we can find this segment deviated either elevated or depressed like in pericarditis. So to define the baseline of the ECG we should look to the segment before the B wave. This is the hydroelectric line. 
the T wave. It represents part of the ventricular repolarization. Normally, it has asymmetric shape. It is not semicircular. That's why its peak is more near to the end than to the beginning. Its amplitude increases. In this case, we will call it hyperacute T wave in many situations like infarction or hyperkalemia. Actually, in infarction, the peaking or the hyperacute T wave is due to localized hyperkalemia and infarcted muscle. So hyperkalemia is the mechanism. The QT interval. It is measured from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. As we said, once we say interval, we will include waves in our measurements. That's why here in this illustration, this is the QT interval from the beginning of the QRS complex till the end of the T wave. So we included the QRS complex and the T wave with the ST segment. QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization and from the G point, the ST segment and the T wave ventricular repolarization. So the QT interval represents the return of the stimulated ventricles to their resting state ventricular repolarization. There is a new index of measuring the QT interval that is called the rate corrected QT. It equals the result of dividing the actual QT interval by the square root of the RR interval both measured in seconds to consider the heart rate in our measurements. So QTC or corrected QT equals QT, the actual QT in seconds divided by RR square. Normally the QTC should be less than 0 0.44 of a second. This means 11 small square in width. It is prolonged due to many factors like some drugs, kidneys, sotalol, amiodarone, and in hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypothermia, ischemia, infarction, subarachnoid hemorrhage. All these causes can lead to prolongation of the QT interval. Prolonged QT interval may predispose the patient to have a potentially lethal ventricular arrhythmias, which is called Torzat de Bois. We will see it later on. This is an example of prolongation of the QT interval. As we said, it is from the beginning of the QRS complex till the end of the T wave. The actual QT interval here is more than 0.44 because there is two big squares, which are 10 small squares, plus one here should be the normal QT interval. But in this case, it is more prolonged. But after rate correction, it became even more prolonged, 0.569. And here also it is too much prolonged. As we can see, one big square, second big square, and about two more small squares. So it's about 12 small squares. The U wave. It represents the last phase of ventricular repolarization. Prominent U wave is a feature of hypokalemia. Very prominent U wave may be due to kinidine, venothiazines, or sometimes in patients with cerebrovascular strokes. Prominent U wave with or without QT interval prolongation may also precipitate to ventricular arrhythmias, exactly like QT interval prolongation. Normally, its direction should be in the same way of the T wave, but negative U wave with positive T wave is seen in case of LVH or ischemia. So here, this is all the waves of the ECG cycle. The B wave shouldn't exceed 2.5 small squares in width or 2.5 small squares in height and this is the BR interval from the beginning of the B wave till the beginning of the QRS complex it is from 3 to 5 small squares shouldn't exceed one big square and then the QRS complex Q R S complex its duration shouldn't exceed 2.5 small squares or half big square and then this is the G point, then the ST segment, which should be on the baseline, shouldn't be elevated or depressed more than one millimeter. And then the T wave with its peak a little bit to the end rather than being to the beginning. And then the U wave, which is the last phase of ventricular repolarization.